Hey guys, welcome once again to Rad. It's been a rough couple of weeks for all of us with the increasing COVID numbers and stricter regulations by the government. But it's a good time for some of us gamers to sit down and finish up some AAA titles we have long kept in our to-do list. However, we are not here to talk about AAA titles today. We are here to talk about some indie games which have changed the standards for gaming and it is a lot of fun to play. True indie titles might not hold the glamour and aesthetic appeal of many mainstream titles. But these titles are just good enough to give those AAA titles a good run for their money. My soft corner for ninjas has nothing to do with how good this first game is. First game in our list is Katana Zero. Now this one came out in 2019 and it is a stylish neo noir action platformer where you take up the role of Zero who is an assassin slashing up enemies in all eight directions and running through levels as fast as you could other than your katana you have powers that lets you slow time roll over bullets and of course revert those bullets back at your enemies like a cool ninja Then of course you have your premonition skills which will let you replay a level again and again when you die. To put it in simple terms, you will die if you get hit once, but you can start off from the start of that particular stage again until you get it right. This is pretty fun when it plays out as you are given the freedom to experiment around multiple approaches to the same level without getting worried about loading your checkpoint again or having missed out some cool moves you wanted to pull off. A short game if you are really good at it of about 6 hours or so, but replayability of this one can eat up hours for you. Once you finish the main game, you will unlock the hard mode and speedrun mode for further polishing your katana skills. The story is a pretty interesting one and definitely they are setting up for a sequel of some sort in the future as you still have many unanswered questions and want to know how the story is going to turn out. This is something to play with great sound effects, some cool soundtracks and futuristic setting with an emphasis to a different mode of storytelling. The next one on the list is a game which is more about strategy than all out action. Into the Bridge is one of those titles I picked up from Epic Store with absolutely no clue what it is about. This is basically your turn based strategy game and puts you in a charge of a squad of mechs to travel back in time and avoid an alien invasion. Each level is a grid type board where there are a certain number of enemies and a defined number of turns you are supposed to survive. You are basically armed with three mech units, each with different type of firepower and different set of ability like pieces of a chess game. You play your turn trying to take out enemies while protecting civilians, buildings and power grids. The boards get interesting as you go on with special objectives to fulfill, items to pick up which enhances your mechs and even the terrain changing around with tidal waves, air strikes and even some special units appearing now and then. Now there are not a lot of levels into this but each level can be pretty challenging as you notch up the difficulty settings. Survive long enough on one island and the next island opens up for you to defend. The odds are always stacked up against you and one wrong move can end your game and force you to start from the beginning. Beat the game once and you will get to unlock a variety of mechs which can be used to replay these levels again but this time the powers and abilities are different. Into the Breach is a wonderful little game and once you are hooked I am sure you will be always thinking about new strategies in your mind even when you are not playing it. Hotline Miami is next on my list. Hotline Miami 2 was a big hit in 2019 and I would recommend playing part 1 and 2 of this title if you are really a fan of indie titles. This one pretty much follows the Katana Zero strategy except the camera is a top angle one and you have an array of weapons. Let it be a baseball bat or a machine gun, there are some 20 odd weapons to try out and unlimited possibilities. A confusing storyline at times, you have to play part 1 and 2 to get an entire picture of the story. But then the gameplay is amazing and I got lost for hours trying to perfect each level, hitting a high combo and trying to beat my best score. Hotline Miami has assassination contracts you need to complete and each level will present you with a target to take down. The setting of the story is in the 80s and the flare of lights and synth music hits you hard as you go through each level. The audio effects are immersive and each level is like a puzzle you have to solve. Blind running and gunning is not always a strategy as you get killed if you get hit once. However, figuring out that one solution to each puzzle needs a lot of trial and error but a fun process. 
you take control of a character who is called Jacket and there are 15 levels to go through till you hit the credits. Then there are 4 secret levels which I won't ruin for you guys with any spoilers. There are no weapons you can carry through to other levels but as you go along you collect masks to put on which you can choose at the start of each level. Now each mask has an ability to it like one hit kill punch or make doors that can kill enemies instantly or even crazy stuff like silent gunshots or guard dogs not attacking you. This one sets the mood and you really feel like you have travelled in the 80s. With a complex mechanic underneath a simple shoot em up game, this is one series which will stand out. My next game would be Red Strings Club. Well this one came out in 2018 and it's a very different game compared to others in the list. Red Strings Club is all about the future. You are left in charge of three characters. One is a bartender, other is an android being and the third one is a hacker. Red Strings Club basically unveils a huge corporate plot through long conversations and decision making. Now primarily, the gameplay mechanics doesn't need you to pick up a gun or infiltrate any facilities. This one is all about conversations and breaking the code of characters with clues and hints. The bartender character is an information broker but we have to mix drinks and make cocktails which hit the corresponding mood on a person and we need to tap in information he holds with a choice of questions. Now outcomes very much depends on the strategy you use and how you reuse information gathered from another character to piece in the missing links of the story. Alternatively you get to make calls impersonating people and do some pottery also. But all that sounds different from what actually the game is all about. Trust me, you don't want to play it if you don't like reading a lot of text and don't care about the attention for detail. But this story is worth playing and by end of the 6-7 hours campaign, it leaves an emotion on your mind which is what makes this game special. This is one of the most simpler games of the list but one worth mentioning. The final entry on my list is Bad North. Too many Viking games had been coming around this year and last year. And this one is a little different from other ones. Bad North has one simple objective, defend an island and its houses. You will have three kinds of soldiers at your disposal namely swordsmen, archers and pikemen. Now each of this category has an advantage over a specific type of enemy and there are around 8 to 10 enemy types that you will face. The gameplay lets you deploy your troops on an island where enemies will start approaching in ships from different directions. You have to place your troops where these enemies land and take them out. It may sound simple enough but there are layers of strategy in Bad North and you will have to plan, reinforce and improvise as you go. Now you have the option of upgrading your troops to better ones with the coins gained from each level. You also have items you could equip which adds to the option you have in terms of some passive and usable abilities. There are about 50 levels to go through and you will have more than 10 platoons of soldiers to use. The graphics of the game is simple but cool and the campaign could take up about 6-7 to seven hours to finish. Then of course there is a hard difficulty mode which can give you many more hours and quite the challenge. Bad North is a fun little game which really pushes your limits with its strategy. So that's my list of 5 games from indie category to play in 2021 and I will be uploading 10 minutes of random game footage from all these titles so that you guys can have a better idea. Please do mind that these are not picked as the best or in terms of release dates or any kind of categorization. Do check out our other videos and we do have an interesting type of game series which had been getting much love from you guys. Thank you all for the support and I will see you guys in the next one. This is Rakesh signing off. Happy gaming.